Um, but but I, that, but the rules said three years yeah. of training. What they were actually getting was eighteen months. At, at, you know, whenever a woman delivered, I mean, there might be a space of six months where nobody was delivering, I guess, and or in their bailiwick. Oh. So I guess that was. I'm guessing. So it's but just. But I, 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 this is what I did to get there. You want some detail? I um. <laughs> I uh, just in another sphere of advocacy, I um, called Miami University, I think it was, and wrote them letters. We didn't have emails at the time, I don't think. Mm. No, it was just before it, I guess. No, it wasn't, because I was already writing books on email. So anyway, um, I wrote the university asking for the catalog that was supposed to educate these people. And they're all medical men, you know. And, a nurse midwife is thought of as a um, companion and supporter, you know, of another woman. Mm -hmm. But here they're taught, you know, strict medicine, which I took, you know, as not being quite as good as having women and nurses who, you know, we've been taught a lot of things about psychology and uh, dealing with people in pain and, and so forth and so on. So it was kind of not quite professional. Yeah. And uh, and I can't remember how we went about it, but we petitioned uh, everywhere I went, just like I do now. Nobody gets away without signing a petition, hmm. uh, or not a petition. We don't do that anymore because they throw out petitions. Hmm. The legislators. We do a, what I call commitment sheets, so they sign in their their contact information what they will do. We do this, this, mm -hmm. and this, this, mm -hmm. so we can follow up and ask them. Okay, make the phone call. You know that kind of thing. So we got a lot of those going, and um, we must have gotten a sponsor to our bill, and who wrote a bill, I can't even remember, but it passed, and now um, so-called lay midwives do come closer to a, uh, a more standardized, more professional, more complete kind of care, prenatal as well as postnatal, which I didn't do before. So because of that, women in rural areas in Florida, right, have access to m more reliable, better kinds of care during their pregnancy and during childbirth Safer than they would have otherwise, that, right? Yes. So you have and they lots have a, fewer women a, at risk. A strategy, mm -hmm. you know, they have a an, an established official um, um, relationship with the local hospital mm -hmm. uh, so that it's legit now to, you know, have a difficulty, that's where the lady goes. Right. Um, goes. Right. Not just hit or miss. You know, hope she gets to the hospital okay. You know? Yeah. So anyway, I made it sound like we're miracle workers, you know, but it's not so. And then what I do, I changed something here in Florida, let's see. Um, oh, having to do with the Constitution separation of church and state, our, our local community hospital, Bay Care Medical Center, um, Let's see, how did it go? Okay, all of a sudden I saw in the business pages of our newspaper that Baker Medical Center was going to, there was a time of financial distress among hospitals, so they were coalescing, mm -hmm. making consortiums. So this, our community hospital, our county hospital, actually, um, collectively joined with the local Catholic Church uh, and you know in order to provide services right and I said uh oh you know because when you talk about medicine and women you think abortion maybe you think contraception and for elderly the end of life mm -hmm. decisions mm -hmm. that have to be made uh, and living wills and so forth and those are anathema in the um, Catholic yeah so Again, I went and I got petitions together and I got, co I always get coalitions together, mm -hmm. you know, work so that somebody sees the benefit of that to their organization. A lot of people didn't and don't because it'll offend business or it'll offend the churches or religion or another sector, so they don't, they don't, you know. Mm -hmm. But we do get people uh, who are familiar with the problems and see some of these answers as real answers and they're willing to pitch in you know, to the extent that they have time. If they don't have time, that's okay too. Nobody's pressuring them. They don't have to do any of the heavy lifting. 
because right. we know that women already carry the world. You know? <laughs> of course. So we are pretty aware of that. Of so right now, what, where we are in Florida is we are sort of at a standstill because we've never had a hearing in the House of the Equal Rights Amendment. Mm -hmm. uh, the Senate committees keep passing it, and the House doesn't, and you know about that in Virginia. Yeah. That's a very, and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. So we're getting, where we used to get, I actually had the sponsor of my bill, a male Republican at one point. That was years ago. Now, mm -hmm. if I get two or three Republicans, and all the Democrats got a sponsor, mm -hmm. say maybe a couple I haven't reached, mm -hmm. but there was, but, um, so it's getting tighter and tighter. Um, so we give, as I say, 67 speeches every every fall, one in every county before this, that particular county's state Who's legislature. We? we is the Equal Rights, I guess I didn't tell you that, <laughs> National, <laughs> National Equal Rights Amendment Alliance, and that's 300,000 supporters. Mm -hmm. You know, not everybody does a lot. Mm -hmm. Some people, um, just want to keep up with the news, and that's good. We mm -hmm. need publicity badly because there are still some pockets of Florida that don't know about the ERA, uh, and some are really genuinely, uh, you know, on board. At one point, with my sixty-seven speeches, I had seven PhDs in the different in the seven different counties giving the speech. I write it, I arrange for it, I mm -hmm. set it up, I answer their questions, I instruct, mm -hmm. and they go and give their speech there. I don't even have to be there. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to do it. If you have right. a legislative Share delegation in in your state, which I don't think Virginia does. I don't think you have legi legislative delegation hearings. These are where the mm -hmm. ordinary citizen comes forward and, and recommends or in effect lobbies for uh, particular legislation or changes in legislation. Yeah, we do, but we do that in the Capitol. In the U.S. Capitol? No, 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 oh, in the no. state Capitol. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's You it. have to go to Richmond <laughs> to have that yeah. conversation. You can have conversations with your representatives when they're in the oh, district, but I don't sure. think... And that's an excellent idea. I don't idea. think that you have... See your, see your legislators in their districts between sessions when they have a minute oh, people to really breathe. Do. People really do try. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. But you have like an organ... You have like a group of volunteers I have in each almost county. Four, yeah, oh, yeah. And I have 4,000, just about 3,974, something like that. Yeah. Real activist activists. And Who are doing what? Uh, right now, um, they're waiting for my newsletter <laughs> to know where we're going. And the poor things, uh, as, as I mentioned, our daughter died just a few months ago. So yeah. that's been put on hiatus. Yeah. You know, because I just don't have the energy, the emotional thrust. To do that work, that's a lot of work to get out to so many people and so much computer glitches and my yeah. computer actually went up in smoke one day. My husband said, what'd you write on there? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I need a new computer, obviously. So we do that and I do fundraising. I do, um, I don't do rallies anymore because women are working, men are involved, men, young men. Uh, if I go to fairs, which mm -hmm. I do, I go to meetings, and I have set up my little table. I'm everywhere. Um, w when I do that, um, what was I going with it? Um, okay, so okay, so where we do that, and we do fundraising through um, my own home garden sales, right, and some others, and with a few garage items, because operating expenses are are a lot. And it can't come out of your family's pocket. Of it course. can't. Of course. It can't because I'm already putting in, sacrificing my family. My my husband just said the other day, I'm so glad you're not running to Tallahassee right now. You know, <laughs> um, so there's that sacrifice. But um, we do go to Tallahassee. We uh, usually bring a f along a few people who can get away and drive mm -hmm. up the tour, six hours up, six mm -hmm. hours back. But we live up there during session until what you call cra crossover. Mm -hmm. After the third week, um, there's if your bill hasn't been heard, it's not going to be. Right. So that's why I don't understand why some organizations, even political organizations, go up there and visit after that point because it won't be mm -hmm. for another year before they even consider it. So right. anyway, long story short, we do that. And uh, for a long while, 
I mean, there's no money. There was no money coming in. Um, so what I would do is, you know, hold these garden sales every seven a year. And I wrote the law that said you can only do two. <laughs> So just last year I got caught. My own city oh, hall said, you can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, well, let, me, let me ask you a couple questions that go sure. a little deeper in some of the things sure, that sure, you sure. said. Um, That's just a couple of things we do. I thought you'd be interested. Yeah, no, um, yeah. All other things. And speeches every the, couple of weeks. The all size of, of working for a political issue, the amount of stuff that people need to be doing really is huge. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to go back to just for a second to the the people who really do the volunteering in your organization the real active activists. Uh, the real activists that that you refer to are they people who um, make phone calls when legislators okay. need to be contacted mm -hmm. and send emails mm. and do they write letters to the editor? Mm -hmm. so in fact, what I often do is I'll make up ten letters to the editor. You want to make them short, a couple sentences, about ERA, right, three sentences. And I send them to different people in parts of Yeah, because they have to be like under 300 or 250 words. Yeah. They have to be a little uh, more. And, and those activists will put it in the newspaper. Right. My goal is to get it widespread. And I also, not to interrupt, but I do Google alerts on the Equal Rights Amendment. Mm -hmm. So wherever in the country there's a letter to the editor, an article about the ERA, I get it. Oh, that's and I write a letter back to that newspaper. Yeah. Nevada, whatever state, South Dakota. So they're aware of what's going on. Right. And, and I do so have, have a national... Have a, you have a group of people who amplify oh, yeah. the work that Thank you're doing. You. Yeah. 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 So because I cannot be everywhere, of course, of course. Mm. But that's really, I think that's really a major. Key, it's is to me. have a good group of people who will amplify the work yeah. of a core group. And I kind of let them down because, like I said, I took a hiatus now. Well, of course you did. But I'm getting back into you didn't the let swing. Them down. <laughs> yeah, your well, life was happening. And <laughs> the same time I'm doing that, I'm I helped write the uh, congressional bill. I don't know if you know that. Hmm? There were four of us who wrote the new congressional bill that is uh, for ERA that eliminates the time limit, which is the latest obstructionist uh, mm -hmm. argument right. that legislators use. There's a, time, there's a deadline. No. There was a time limit in the toothless introductory clause. Right. Um, you vote on the wording of the ERA body, not that. Right. So it's already been changed once. Uh, by Congress, it can be changed again, that right. time limit. In fact, we want to eliminate it to give us enough time to just get three more states ratified. Right. Unfortunately, they're all run by Republicans. All the unrats are yeah. run by Republican legislators. Yeah. Uh, we just have to get them on our side. And I go to Republican meetings, and I'm actually registered as a Republican, just so I get the literature from them. Mm -hmm. I know what they're up to. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, go that's ahead. a really great. Actually, that's a really great. Those point. are just a couple of ideas. Going to, well, it's, yeah, those are really great ideas actually well, for, for uh, working on it. But and, and I get to, I get to proselytize a little bit. You know, uh, is your, is everybody in your family making equal wages? Oh yeah, my daughter's a teacher. And she makes. And I said, has she asked? You know, mm -hmm. does she ask? Do you know that? You know, and. Um, so I just talked like that, and one of them once said, you sound like a Democrat. And I said, no, I'm a Republican. I'm registered Republican. Go look me up. <laughs> a little devious there. I mean, consider the <laughs> well, deviousness. Well, I mean, if you want to, if you want to reach people, right? You go where they go are. Go where they are. That's what makes arguments that make sense to them. Right, you know? in their sure. own backyard. Sure, yeah. and, absolutely. Right and I'm sorry, I interrupted you. No, it's great. It's it's. Totally good. I, I don't want to interrupt you, but I also like sort of want to go back to some of the things that you touched the on and spend more time in there. there. Yeah. Um, one of them is, you know, that we've been talking just for the last little while about, you know, the amount of the the amount of time and energy and effort that goes into the work that you're doing. You have to be because um, you don't have you don't have a staff. I mean, you have people who help amplify your voice when they're ready and you're when they and yeah. By yourself. I did hire a, a woman for quite a while, and she was wonderful, mm -hmm. just wonderful. Okay. Uh, to help me clean up my uh, email lists, because with that many people on it, every yeah. time I wrote one, I was due for an onslaught of. Bounces. Bounces, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. But this, 
I mean, it sounds like most of the time you have a full time eighteen hours a day. Okay. Was what I was doing. So and still kind of Which is yeah, which you know, which you can handle and you want to be doing. I don't think I can. Maybe not forever. I, but I, you I often do things I can't <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah, so well don't we? But I mean, you don't get how it unless you, you try. But you but you did you start working for the ERA after you and Charlie retired? No. <clears throat> I think I was mentioning, as I was teaching in the 70s. That's when okay. you started. That's when I, I, I marched in several states right. then for the ERA before 1982. Right. How did you put your activism and mom, wife, professor, <laughs> you know, nurse work, how did you put those two things together? I don't know how you, know, you, because I think a lot you of, mean by together. Well, how did you... I f I'll tell you the truth, I force fit them. Uh, well, there you I go. force fit them, like most women force fit uh, work life balance, that nebulous yeah, thing that right? it doesn't exist. People don't, people don't know what to make it of it. It doesn't exist. Yeah. Something, something suffers. And uh, uh, Charlie was working overtime too. And we had a kind of a tough, rough time at that time. Uh, so it didn't work really all that well. Okay. Um, you know, my being in different places, but I, I edged assertiveness into all my classes. Mm -hmm. And I had my 15 or so faculty mm -hmm. uh, edge it in too. Women have got to stand up for their rights or they don't have any. And I'm right. starting to tell you a little, little side of the thing. Well, but your happened. family came out the other side of that, right? When things didn't Absolutely. fit together so nicely. Yeah. Well, you, you, it's, it's really essential either that you have no husband uh, who counts on you, or you have no children, or you have a very accepting family. What I didn't do, that I should have done, now that I look back, is we should have had round table discussions about what was going on. As a family. Yes, as a family. Oh. So there was more understanding, and it wasn't just something mommy's doing, I don't know what she's doing, and <laughs> daddy goes to work, and neither one of them are home when I need them. You know, it was not... Oh. Yeah. It, it would have been, and it's the wise thing to do, but you know, when you're that busy, because I was teaching a full load as well as running a department and writing this pharmacology book at night, and, mm. and then of course to get tenure you had to um, volunteer in the community and all kinds of stuff, so I did all that. Um, so there's ups and downs, and but if you want something bad enough, you need to work for it. Of you course. need to be out there yeah. doing it actively and speaking about it uh, in assertive terms. Yeah. You know, if you can do this, I know people you can. can bring their kids you know, yes. now, you know, um, and they will when they can. Well, see, you my know, kids were a little bit older when I got it. They were not, they, I didn't start this till they started school. Mm -hmm. I didn't really dig into this side of mm -hmm. my, my college and teaching and, and but it takes, it would take and should take genuine discussion. I'd say once a week, call a campfire. Yeah. You know, that's what I would I do. think families need to do that no matter what they're doing. You are so bad. <laughs> you, you know, so, just you just assume in. That, they, that the people around you see what you're doing and know and understand yeah. and in favor. Not necessarily. No, I, but no. I and know they're that not for participating. Certain. Yeah. You know? Well, and you know, you're just in your office doing something. Yeah. They don't know what it is you know, that, you know, the pharmacology piece. book is going to be yeah. you're just looking at this you mm -hmm. know um, and our teachers outside. always because I was going to school going to college when women didn't moms mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. and so they'd always you know Easter break oh I'll just give you a term paper to do well I had 22 for Easter dinner right. that's a lot different so right. they would come and I had research papers all over the floor in certain piles mm -hmm. you know and then they would tromp through them you mm -hmm. know it was not easy it yeah. really wasn't easy. I might have done it differently, hmm. you know, if I had it to do it. With. I know I would have had more communication among us. I would have made time to do that important step. Yeah. But I don't regret it, and my kids turned out great, and they're both feminists. Oh, no, yeah. I'm not the one remaining <laughs> daughter still. Like. This, is good. this is really good, because... They came to understand, even if they didn't right then, yeah. you know, what the work was and what you were concentrating yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Which is But, you know, they need more of mommy than work allows. It's just plain work. Yeah, I know. Nine to five work. 
And there is no such thing as work-life balance for a working mom. Yeah. It just isn't. Yeah. Unless you've got a nanny. Well, nobody or, does. And a, twink, <laughs> and a 